9mm versus 45 ACP, can we end the age-old debate on this episode of Ultimate Barrier Testing? Okay, I don't know if we're actually going to end the debate, but let's see which one does better on the four targets that I have lined up. And now on to the first target. Up first, we have a thick piece of lumber. This is a 6x6 six six piece of pressure treated lumber, and in case you don't already know the drill, two shots from each cartridge followed by a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood just to see what the damage is. I think we're good to go. According to a forum I read one time, and you know how reliable those are, the 45 ACP is going so slow that it literally bounced back at a guy after shooting lumber. I don't particularly want to find out what happens if it bounces back, so I will be placing safety as the number one priority. With my new safety shield! What, the holes? It had to be lightweight. Well, let's start with the 9. We'll see what happens. All right, two shots spread out about an inch and a half if I had to guess. I'm really interested to see what... Okay. Okay, the 9mm definitely did not go through, and just in case you don't believe that, let's take a look. Yep, definitely nothing on that either. Oh, now on to the 45. Guys, if I don't make it, tell my wife she was right about the shield. Well, they didn't appear to bounce back. About the same spread as the 9mm. I'm kind of doubtful, though. Yeah. Definitely did not go through the 6x6 piece of pressure-treated lumber. And nothing on the 3 quarter inch piece of plywood as well, obviously. Think this round is a draw. Breaking news! Both 9mm bullets penetrated over a full inch deeper than their 45 ACP counterparts, so I would say we have a pretty definitive winner for this round. So I think it's pretty safe to say that the 45 ACP did not bounce back, but let's see if the shield would even protect me in the first place. 45 coming in hot! Oh yeah, those holes are way smaller than the 45 bullet, but uh, what about the 9? That one is way smaller. 9mm coming in hot! Oh, that is a close one right there. Let's get this trash out of here and make way for the next- oh wait, that was still good. For the next target! Whoa, whoa, okay, there we go. We are looking good. This is a box of sand, 8 inches deep to be exact. You know what else is 8 inches deep? This box right here has stopped some serious rifle rounds. So if either of these tiny cartridges go through, I will be thoroughly impressed. Let's see though. It's time to 9. Well, it came in a little higher than I would usually like to see, but let's turn it around. And see absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I guess we better turn it back around for the 45. All right, I think we're good to go for the 45. It's time to 45. No, that one doesn't sound as good. I think, yeah, that was pretty dang close to the same hole as the 9mm. Now let's turn it around. And almost drop it. Absolutely nothing on the back. I, I figured that much. Let's check. To, yep, definitely nothing on the back. I think this round is a draw. All right, let's get this out of here. Oh, sand is getting all over me. Let's flip this bad boy around. This three quarter inch piece of plywood ooh, is lasting way longer than I thought it would. Now, all we need to do is add a couple of wings that are getting super rusty. I think we're ready for the next target. Up next, we got concrete blocks. 1.57 inches thick to be exact. For some reason, they're called 2-inch pavers. But uh, anyway, let's see if these bullets shatter the concrete, or if the concrete shatters the bullets. I think we're good to go. I think the shield may come in handy for this test. On to the 9, though. Well, that did more to the concrete than I thought it would. Still not even close to as eventful as the rifles. It uh, did a pretty good number. Doesn't look like it went super deep. And definitely no remnants on the three-quarter inch piece of plywood either. Let's see if any portions of the bullet or any... 
Okay, looks like that may be a big piece of the jacket there, and then uh, here's a piece of lead as well. I guess it shredded up that bullet pretty good. Guess it's on to the 45. Will this three quarter inch piece of plywood meet its demise? I have absolutely no idea. Guys, a little piece of concrete came back and landed right on top of my pants. Now that was pretty eventful. Even though it's a pistol cartridge, it still did a pretty good number on this concrete block, as you could see. Let's see if there are any remnants on the three. Uh, I don't see anything. Guess let's see if there are any pieces of the bullet anywhere. Oh, oh. That is basically the whole jacket, if I had to guess. That is a keeper right there. Super cool. And apparently my camera thought it was pretty eventful too. Just take a look at that shattered protective screen. I guess this round is a draw as well. Nope, I'm not shooting steel with these subpar cartridges. But what about the shield? Nope. Round number four is actually a block of clear ballistics gel. Oh, that was pretty fun. Let's get this out of here. You've seen the Unisled in forwards and reverse, but did you know that it could also be pushed on its side? Well, now you do. Oh, guys, I think I just found the lead from the 45 ACP. That is crazy. Looks like it's basically fully intact as well. Actually, it'll probably be easier if I just put it upside down completely. Okay, we're looking good now. Anyway, whichever cartridge produces the bigger wound channel and remains within the FBI's penetration sweet spot will be the winner. To test this expansion, I have a cult classic for both of these cartridges. Federal HSTs. Thanks to Federal for supplying these for the test, and thanks to Clear Ballistics Gel for supplying the block. Anyway, how's about we start with the 9? I really don't have a good way to chronograph these, so we're just gonna have to rely on the numbers on the boxes. <laughs> Sweet. This is actually the first clear ballistics gel test I've done on this channel, and we got our first catch as well. I think I like this stuff, but anyway, if I had to guess, I don't have a roller on me, but uh, if I had to guess, probably went about 13 inches, and that wound channel is pretty decent for a handgun. From what I've seen, I mean, I'm no expert on clear ballistics gel. On to the 45, though. Man, that 45 has a deep hole. You could almost get lost in that hole. I think the 9mm is in trouble on this round. <laughs> Okay, let's see what happened. Uh, oh, oh, from what I can tell, it doesn't really look all that much different than the 9mm. <clears throat> I mean, the wound channels basically line up perfectly, and the 45 ACP didn't even go quite as deep as the 9mm. So I guess we'll go back to the bench and do a little bit further investigation. Both Federal HSTs provided picture-perfect expansion, or close to picture-perfect expansion. They would have been perfect if I didn't pull them out with needle-nose pliers. But guys, I'm not an archaeologist or a paleontologist or anything like that. Anyway, the widest point that I could find on the 45 HST, the pedals at least, was 881 thousandths. And the widest point that I could find on the 9mm HST was 696 thousandths. Both of the bullets came in at about 100% of their original weight, but the 9mm actually came in a little bit higher than the original weight, or at least the weight on the box, and I have no idea what's going on there because I didn't see any ballistic gel stuck in there at all, so maybe something was stuck underneath the pedals that I just couldn't see or something like that. I have no idea. And moving on to the gel results, both started opening up at approximately the three-quarter inch mark, and both carried a very similar permanent wound channel out to about the seven inch mark, but the nine millimeter actually carried a slightly larger permanent wound channel past that point, which is pretty impressive considering the difference in the bullet expansions. At its leading edge, the 45 penetrated approximately 12.75 inches with a maximum wound channel width of 0.653 inches. At its leading edge, the 9mm penetrated approximately 13.25 inches with a maximum wound channel width of approximately 0.703 inches. So essentially what this boils down to is that the 9mm penetrated about a half inch deeper than the 45 ACP with a 50 thousandths inch wider wound channel. That 147 grain HST is bad to the bone. 
and the winner for this episode of Ultimate Barrier Testing with a total score of 75 points is obviously the 9mm. And remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas.